Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Melody Made Easy. Uh, I'm actually at work right now. I'm working inside of my school, but uh, I really wanted to talk about this really quick. It's pretty short and simple. Uh, this song came off of Church's new album. Uh, I forget what it was called, <laughs> but it's like pink. It's got like pink squares on it. Um, it's called Every Open Eye. That's what it's called. So I'm going to just talk a little bit about the song structure and talk about this chorus, which I heard when I was walking and I thought, you know what, this is something that I did recently in one of my songs. I think I did in like episode three where I was talking about like different ways of layering chords. I'd recommend you watch it if you uh, are interested in this and it really helps with the chorus. So I'm just gonna, this song is pretty good. I'm just gonna play little bits of it like before the, before the part I'm talking about. So it's, it sounds um, it sounds like it's staying in one place, da na 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 na, -na and then it goes na 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 again, but it's moving. And this is another example of harmonies actually doing the movement instead of the melodies because the melody is on top. So I'm gonna just show you what this looks like. So we're gonna play it, the piano with the melody, and we're gonna listen to it together now. All right, so essentially what happens is this, this I'm going to cover this in a future episode. I'm going to call it like the magic of sixths or something. Sixths, so like fifth, sixth, seventh. So the magic of sixths. And essentially what a six is, is it like a six is um, a sixth. Sorry, it's kind of a tongue twister, but it's a really important thing to know about when you're doing tensions because when you have a top note being the thing that you want to hold to, because that's going to be a tonic, but you you want it to stay there anyway. What you can do is put the sixth under it. And I know, like, in this example, it's six steps under, so you could call it, so you go down. It's a, it's a sixth downward. And this, this interval is really, really useful because it's really great for pulling. And I was going to show an example. You know what? I'm going to make this the sixth episode, so... The Magic of Six Episode. I'm just going to use this song, and I'm also going to use two other songs I got. Prima Donna Girl and so another one. But for this song in particular, let's just look at this. And you can hear it just in, you can hear it in the synths too. It's those two notes. Dun, dun, ah. And then they resolve, but they resolve kind of subconsciously. Not, not subconsciously, but... It's, it sounds good, but you don't know why, because the melody's not changing. But, so hear how this goes into this. It's because this is pulling downward, and it has to go up. It's like you're stretching a rubber band. This is like the rubber band being stretched, and this is it kind of snapping into place. Does that make sense? I, I don't, like... I haven't even looked at the key signature. I haven't looked at the chord tones. I haven't looked at anything. I just knew that they were using a six because that's what it sounds like. This is why I want to call this channel like Melody Made Easy at some point because the biggest thing I'm trying to stress here is that these are things that you can use without knowing any music theory at all. You just know, okay, you have six steps apart and then boom, pull it back in. And you can do that under a melody. And the reason why I say six is um, if you go, See, like, you have to count it kind of strange, so you can't just go one, two, three, four, five, six. You have to go one, two, three, four. No, no, no. Hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so I, I could figure out what scale this is, but, you know, it's got a lot of sharps, and I have to think for a second. I don't want to bother. But I know that if you count up, it's six. And you just learn that over time because it develops in your ear, it develops in your head. You get really good at it. This is something that I discovered when I was really young and I was just sitting at a piano and it's helped me throughout my entire uh, melody making life. And it's really important to know. And I'm actually gonna, I was gonna, I made the, the MIDI data for this, but I'm just gonna go play the other songs. Actually, before I leave this song just yet, I wanna talk about this B flat that I saw. So 
actually i think it's just a it's just a b because this song has a weird key signature i'm used to this being a b flat but so what is this why about i put that there all right so you can hear there's a chord change i'm actually going to start from the beginning All right, did you hear that? This, this, in the, in the, in the synth. So why did they put that B flat there right before? Well, it has, it's again, it has to do with this rubber banding effect of tension and release that makes melodies really good. So if you listen, it makes it, this being so close to this pulls it more. So now instead of, because if it pulled the whole time, then it would have been a little early. You don't want the entire chorus to be finished pulling halfway through. That would be a little lame. So they finish pulling for a little bit, then they pull down a little bit, because now this part of the rubber band, if you think of this as a rubber band, now it's being pulled cl a little close, and it stretches back up. So... And rise above. So this is kind of a rubber banding in the opposite way. He could have done it... He could have done it th like this too, but it wouldn't have sounded as good. It would have, like, I'm going to turn this up. It would have sounded fine. So, how did you know that? You know, I ha <laughs> people ask me, like, I don't know what notes to put in my piano roll. So, I said, well, that's, you're not thinking right. You don't just, oh, I'll just throw a note here. I'll just throw a note here. I'll just, like, like that's not how you make melodies. You know, you have to, you have to think in... You have to think of the rubber band when you make the melody. So I knew this was going to sound good, and I know that this would sound good too. See, I already know that's going to sound good because I'm aware of the rubber band. I'm aware of which steps are good parts to put this rubber band, essentially. So, but I'm going to move it back. So this one, this one, and this one because the reason why I know it's those notes and like like I said I don't know what key this is I haven't thought about it but using my ear and looking at it I know that if it were to be here it would still be in a it would still be comfortable for the rubber band if it was here it would be a little weird if it was here it would be too comfortable for the rubber band because because if I think about the steps in which this chord is going to be without looking at notes without looking at charts without looking at a you know you know that like the reason why i'm talking about this is because there's a there's a like if you look at a circle of fifths like you know people look at this uh, and they they get so confused and they quit music forever you know they're like you know look at this stuff no one wants to look at this no one no one in their right mind wants to look at this and be like oh yeah man you got to know this like you don't have to know this i know it because I learned it like myself, but you, if you don't know this, don't look at it and be like, oh, I have to know that, all right? So anyway, I kind of got off topic there, but oh yeah, so how is it that I know that, that that's a pull for the rubber band, but this isn't a pull? Well, the reason why I know that this note is not a pull for the rubber band is because it's comfortable sounding, and when I say it's comfortable sounding, I mean, listen to this. Listen to those two notes. Listen to these two. Pull not pull and then that's not a pull you can just hear it you can hear that's not a pull you got to get good at hearing it why is it not a pull well it's just not i'm just gonna say it's just not this is a pull that's a pull because that has to go down here and the reason why he used this note or whoever the producer maybe lauren wrote it but because where does this go this is too close to this one, so it's not it's not gonna snap back up to here because if it's I'm gonna turn this down, you might not be able to hear me. This is not gonna snap back up to here because there's something already here. So this has to go down. And where does it go down? And then it goes down here. This is where this is where it goes down. So this they put this here because it's gonna go down here. That's why they didn't use this one, even though it would have sounded good. See, if he wanted to go up, which would have been a bad idea, he could have, um, if he wanted to go up, like, he could have done this. Whoa. Sorry. He could have gone up here. See, then he would have done that, but I don't, I don't think Lauren wanted to sing that high, and, you know, it, it's just not as good. So this is a great example of a good melody using harmonies to pull 
and push a passage or a, a section. So hope that made sense. I was going to stop here, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, the songwriting. So I know that a lot of you guys like my Melody Made Easy, uh, no, my bad EDM melodies and why Must Die sucks. So he doesn't suck. It's just that sucked what he did. So I'm just going to talk about this, why this is so great. So you have eight measures of ear candy or four measures. This is just really nice. It's like a good intro and then boom, they're done. All right. There's no more of that. Must Die made this part like way too long already. So don't make your super cool intro super long. Cover up, cover up. All right, so then you got eight measures of whatever this is. It's like a verse. And I am catching so eight measures of verse is great. And then they didn't want to go into the chorus too soon, so they did another eight measures of a separate verse. They did, churches did this on, um, I think they did this on Recover, but I think, you know, what's weird is they put this part, this part right here, I think they put this after the chorus. So if you listen to, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm just going to show you right now. So you can kind of mix and match these, but think of them like little blocks that you can that you can interchange. But it goes verse, then chorus. You can throw stuff in there however you want. Yeah. All right, so in this song, they did eight measures of verse, and then they went into the chorus, which is the best part, and then they went to the other part. Right here. This is the next This is the next eight measure block. So the reason why they made the, the meat of the song first is because this is lower, this is less energetic, and it would have made less sense to put this part before the chorus. The, and if I recover. So it's a good idea that they did that. Now, but in this song, it's a good idea that they waited in a second. Because this is rising up. This is rising up. Bury and rise above. And they're also introducing the. Bury and rise above. So it's going to sound really good when she starts screaming here. And then, boom. So this is like, you could call this a chorus, and like this is like a super chorus or something, but I'm going to call this the chorus. And then this is like the this is like the, the treat that she's giving you for listening to the chorus. It's not, it's still energetic, but it's like, it's like the colorful, like, this is the part where she, so she just like, she's on the stage, she's singing really loudly. And then this is the part where she walks away from the stage all like, all sassy and stuff. I'm just swearing. Like, so this is the, this is the kind of reward, I guess, for this part. And then it goes back, it does the same thing. So great song, great song structure. It's really great. And I hope that this deconstruction can help you make songs like this if you want. Um, this is, you know, I like it because it's, uh, it's pop music and pop music is structured and uh but you know you don't have to make songs like this you don't have to have structure but to know it can help all right so i'm gonna close this and i'm gonna look at a uh, whoa oh my god <laughs> all right hey look here's lauren right here i think she's doing something cute in this yeah all right anyway um i don't want you guys looking at that all right so what was i oh, i was gonna show you guys prima donna girl at about six Uh, shoot. I don't know how to find it. <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna pause. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna save Prima Donna Girl for the next tutorial because this one's getting a little long already, and uh, I can teach you guys about um, a new progression that I haven't gone over yet. So I'll see you guys next time.